Hi there, and welcome to my quick overview of the Sony Digital 8 DCRTRV350 NTSC Digital Handycam Digital 8 Super Awesome Camcorder. I found this uh, this beauty at uh, a local Goodwill store this past weekend. Twenty five dollars is what I spent on it, and I just want to give you uh, an overview of this amazing piece of technology. Um, years ago, I was a uh, a regular eight millimeter video camera user, and then I was a high eight millimeter camera user, and then when Digital Eight came out, I adopted one as well. Now the model that I had at that time was a lot more expensive model than this one, but uh, this particular unit is pretty fabulous. Uh, what makes it great? Well, the fact that it will play all of those formats that I just mentioned. You can play uh, eight millimeter movies, you can play high eight movies, and you can play back uh, digital eight movies as well. And of course, digital eight is all digital. So your movies that you make will have 12 or 16 bit stereo sound. They'll have um, uh, gorgeous 480p digital quality video, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you'll be a movie making star. All right, so let's take a quick look here. This uh, particular unit is uh, one of the better units. It offers USB streaming, and like I said, high eight and eight millimeter playback. Uh, down here on the, on the on the front here we have an S video input jack as well as our uh, standard audio video input jacks. You have a DV digital input uh, or FireWire input as well as a USB port. What makes the USB port kind of cool is the fact that you can use this camera as a webcam over that USB port. And there's a specific driver you have to find and locate. But once you do, uh, you'll be doing great, and you'll be having uh, uh, some amazingly high-quality uh, webcamming going on there. It has a 20x optical viewfinder on it. It has a 700 times digital zoom. It has uh, what is known as night shot, so you can turn that on and see in the dark, essentially. And uh, the picture quality on that is pretty poor. It's it's almost like green and white, but uh, still, it's pretty cool, pretty cool feature. Um, on the front, you have your uh, standard left and right uh, microphones for stereo recording. You have a light on the front. And the amazing thing that has uh, made these obsolete, of course, is probably the unit I'm using now to make this video, which is a iPhone 5 phone. So why worry about tapes and media when you can just make movies right there on your phone and upload them to YouTube and share them with the entire universe within seconds? This thing is a pain. For instance, one of the videos I made today reviewing the iPhone 5, I actually filmed it with this camera and I put it on this tape. And what it is going to require me to do once I and ready to upload it to YouTube is I'm going to have to put a firewire card or firewire uh, wire uh, cable on this unit. Now this is how you load tapes in here. This is just awkward. Opening it from the bottom, okay, and you squeeze that. And it pulls the tape inside and threads it along the video heads and stuff. And then you can hear it. It's kind of loud. Once the, uh, the uh, video head starts spinning, close that up. So again, I made my review on this guy this morning, and uh, I can show you kind of what it's like to play that back. Here is your, uh, your viewfinder here with the little LCD screen, and you've got a myriad of controls here. Turn on my little light here, possibly. Nope, I guess I can't turn my light on midstream anymore. All right, uh, so there's your controls there on the left. Uh, you've got uh, your battery goes here. You have a viewfinder here, which uh, I forget how you. Oh, okay, wait. Let me close this up. All right, and then you can look into the viewfinder, which I believe is. Uh, let's focus it a little bit here. Yeah, I believe. 
believe that's a black and white viewfinder. So, uh, kind of interesting, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and play back what I did this morning on the screen. And uh, it's probably way more fun to just go to my videos and watch the video I made and see what kind of quality it will make for you. But again, it's the video where I talk about the iPhone 5. Hey guys, thanks for joining me right now for this uh, buyer's guide for the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 5. And see, as you can and see here, it's showing 16 bit, showing digital LG 8, but it's recording in the, the standard here. play mode. The LG Thrill is right this is the iPhone 4, but not the 4S. So you may be wondering, which phone should I buy? All these exciting new phones have just come out, and which one should I get? You know, I mean, they're all cool, and they're all neat, but, uh, you know, why the So kind of ironic, I'm using sense? older technology to review newer technology. On the top here, you have your VCR controls, you know, your standard, uh, you can turn your light on and off, you got your battery info, you got your rewind, play, fast forward, stop pause and record and you've got a uh, color slow s and super ns which is super night shot I'm not, I'm not sure what color slow s is but uh, again here's your uh, see in the dark uh, switch right here so uh, the quality of digital 8 is just really spectacular and if you need one of these to copy off all of your old home movies from regular 8 and high 8 uh, the quality is going to be better that it's going to be on your original camera because this has digital processing on the way out the gate. So even if you record it analog out the analog port, um, it's going to look better. But the cool thing is if you have a FireWire port on your computer, you can take those old movies, input in them into your computer via this digital video jack, and they will be digitized prior to putting them into your computer. So. The, uh, the camera will actually do the video processing for you instead of using some kind of a capture device or some cheap, cheesy USB to video adapter. So that's kind of cool. Now, I don't know if this particular model has it, but uh, my particular unit that I bought new and paid about $700 for had the ability to input via a standard analog RCA jack and output via FireWire. So I could take anything like uh, LaserDisc or VHS and put it into my computer using that camera. Again, I don't know if this particular model has that, but if it does, that's a cool feature as well because then it becomes a video capture device for you. So let's take a quick look. This is a, uh, this is a video I put together recorded directly on to the camera from LaserDisc just to test the quality of it and it does look pretty spectacular on this screen here I don't know if you'll be able to hear it as well as see it but uh... oh, okay this is actually a, uh, a wet, uh, I used to do wedding videos and I made my own logo screen for my wedding video business and, um, yeah, that's it. Pretty cool, huh? And then there's another part of it here. that kind of went along with it. Yeah, I'll have to upload this uh, as a separate item. This, uh... This was a pretty cool project that I worked on where I just put together a little, little logo here. This was, uh, I used U-Lead Photo Studio and U-Lead uh, 3D Creator or something along those lines. I forget what that is actually called, but uh, that was pretty cool software. You could do that kind of stuff right there in your computer. And I did not have the fastest computer at that time. Let's see what else is next on here. <laughs> we had a little glimpse of audio there from something. 
Uh, here's a little logo, uh, or title screen, reception. All right. Now this is the actual Laserdisc uh, part here. All right, so then we, we did a little bit of Lion King. I'm gonna fast forward here. Yeah, so this was a uh, Lion King transferred from uh, Laserdisc. So again, you can see your Digital 8 uh, logo there at the top. Standard uh, play is the, or the SP speed, is the speed that I recorded this at. So, you know, this camera is equally as great of a VCR as it is a camera, because you can record any kind of analog signal into it and make a digital copy of it, which is really nice. So, it has uh, just your regular standard features as far as Sony cameras go. Oh, no memory stick. I guess I, did, I wanted to take a picture there. You can take photos with it. My particular one boasted uh, megapixel uh, image quality. This one doesn't say that anywhere on it, and it's probably one megapixel. Uh, you've got a uh, memory stick uh, slot right here to put some uh, memory sticks in it. And then, of course, your controls over here on the side, which is your VCR. Yeah, I'm going to put that out there. So you got your VCR, camera, memory, off charge, that kind of thing. All right. I never did like putting my tapes into the bottom of the thing. I thought that was so weird. Why not just have it open up here on the side and insert your tape and go from there? But, uh, you know, that's Sony engineering for you. So uh, some of the cool special effects it'll do, you can do sepia, you can do widescreen, you can do uh, standard 4.3 format. Uh, videotaping um, doesn't do fabulous in low light and uh, apparently the iPhone 5 does really good in low light because I'm using a mild amount of light right now to film this and uh, this guy looks pretty good so um, these are fun these are really fun uh, if you can find one of these off of eBay great for transferring uh, your old movies off onto uh, DVD or put them on the computer and share them over YouTube, that kind of stuff, fantastic. So um, anyway, just taking you back in time a little bit to the 90s, maybe the early 2000s, I don't remember. I don't know if this actually has a has a date code on the bottom of it, but uh, nope, I'm not seeing one. Although it is made in Japan, so you know, darn it, all the best stuff was made in Japan. Eventually, there were models of the Hi8 and our uh, digital light cameras that were made in China, but uh, this one was lucky enough to still be a Japanese made one. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, brief overview of this wonderful technology from our past.